Hi, it's Ben here, and in this video I want to go over how to create an uplink in Anvil. Uh, for those of you that are new to Anvil, Anvil is a web-based rapid application development tool where you can build things on the front end and the back end all using Python. So let's get into it. So I've logged into my anvil.works account here, and uh, I'm just going to create a new blank app and choose Material Design. So I'm going to add a column panel here, just for looks. And in that column panel, I'm going to drag in a label, a text input, and a button, as well as another label. Let's put it here. So in this first label, let's label all of these. This first one is going to be um, Label description. This text. This text box will be input, and this label here will be output. <clears throat> and we'll call this button submit. I'm also just going to label this as uh, submit and change this column panel to a card. All right, and let's say um, enter your name. So what this simple demo is going to do is uh, we're going to put in a name here in the input box and uh, it'll then use the uplink that will access the server side of things, uh, which will actually be on this computer here. And it's going to run a function and return back something like hello uh, from uplink and the, the person's name. All right. So the first thing that we need to do to get started with uplink is we need to go to uh, the settings gear icon here and go to uplink and so it says here uh, connect app to existing code and we're, we're doing it on the server side and so we click here enable the anvil server uplink for this app and when we when we click on that it gives us this uplink key uh, which is what we need uh, in our uplink code and actually we can just follow these instructions exactly as is um, we need to install uplink on our on our server side and then we can use this code. So I'm going to go to my terminal here. Let's create a virtual environment and uh, I can pull that up here. So we can search for Python virtual environment, which is uh, Venv. And let's pull this up here. So we can just take this code and this is uh, not Anvil related, but it's creating a virtual environment. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it here. We need to name the folder for the virtual environment, which I'm just going to call Venv here. All right. So give it a sec and it will create that virtual environment. And then the way we activate that virtual environment is we go dot Venv then activate just like that and so we'll see we're in a virtual environment when it shows this in parentheses uh, that we're in this vem ven virtual environment so now we can start installing uh, anything that we need so for example pip install anvil uplink that's the first thing we'll do i'm going to copy that command c or in windows com uh, control c so pip install anvil uplink. So that'll install. And once that's ready, we can now use anvil uplink. So uh, I'm going to copy and paste this code, this, uh, this third one here, because this one gives us a, a, a nice example. So I'm going to copy and paste that, and I'll go into VS Code. Um, 
So again, this is the folder that I'm in. It ha doesn't have anything in it, but I'm going to create a file called uplink.py and paste in that code. So import Anvil server, uh, Anvil server connect, and then this is the uplink key that uh, Anvil provided us. And right here, we're going to um, have a function called say hello, all right? And it takes in one input, which is name. And uh, make sure this matches up. But instead of saying print hello from uplink, I'm going to make this, um, I'm going to call this uh, response equals, and then I'm going to change this and put that there. And uh, we're going to print the response instead. And the reason why I'm doing that is I also want to return the response. All right. And then this last line here is basically a loop that it has where it's just constantly monitoring for any new uh, function calls on the server side through uplink. And so this needs to be included so that when we run the script, it doesn't just run and end, but it just continues to wait until there's a, another response. Okay. So that's basically it. Uh, so, oh, and then there's also Anvil server callable. This has to be there uh, in order for Anvil to know that they that it can call this say hello function. Uh, if this was not there and we tried to call say hello uh, Anvil, it just would not work. So that's uh, this is also essential that it's there. All right, so we're gonna call say hello uh, in our code now. So let me just save that, that's saved. And uh, what we can do actually is we can go back to terminal and just clear the screen. And we can see that there is that uplink.py file. So I'm gonna say Python uplink.py. And it's gonna to connect to Anvil Works and open up, web, open up a web socket. And it's, uh, it said, once it says it's connected, uh, you know, that last line of code is looping through and it's just waiting for any, any calls to this uplink file. All right, so that's ready on the server end. This is running obviously on my own computer, uh, but it can run on any server or any, uh, anything that's connected to the internet. And uh, if you run it just like, uh, like this, Python uplink, uh, it'll be ready. So let's go back to the code here. So now how do we call this uplink code from the client side? And so this is the client side. And what we want is when someone puts in their name here, they're going to click this submit button and then call the uplink code and it's going to return a value uh, or return a string. So let's double click on this submit button. And what happens is it'll go to the code view and it automatically creates this function called button submit click. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this here. And we're just going to uh, put in something, some very simple code. And I'm going to call this text equals anvil dot server dot call. This will call a function. And uh, so our function name is say hello. And the second input is the actual name, or, or sorry, the, the parameter that we're taking in. And so that will be self.textboxinput.text. So that's the, the text box, the line that we're putting in. We want to feed that to this, the Anvil uplink code. And then we want to then output whatever is returned to self label and that's underscore input dot text equals text all right so again this code here this say hello function is running on my computer uh, in this uplink.py file so there's say hello and it takes in the name and so we're feeding it the name and it's going to return that response all right so let's run this and uh, let's see what happens. So enter your name, I'm gonna put in George and submit that. And it says, hello from the uplink, George. And so if I go back to my computer here and this uplink.py, uh, actually let's go to the terminal, uh, it does say hello from the uplink, George, because we also printed out to the, to the console here, right? And so it shows it there and it also shows it here. So if I was to put in like Samantha, 
and submit it. It says, hello from the uplink, Samantha. And on my computer, uh, it also says, hello from the uplink, Samantha. So Anvil on the client side is actually triggering a function that's on my computer through this uplink and running the function and returning a value back to Anvil, the Anvil client. And um, so you're probably asking, okay, that's, uh, that's kind of contrived and uh, a lot of work, and, and that's true. We could have actually just created the server-side code here. So if I add a, a new module right here, and I go back to my server-side code, and I copy this whole thing and paste it here. Now I'm gonna say, um, we can't have the same name here, say hello here as well as say hello there, because it's not gonna know which one to call. But if I say, uh, this is say hello local, right? And maybe if I go back to here and I say, say hello remote, so these have different names. Uh, so I'm gonna save this file and anytime I make a change to this code, I actually need to rerun it. So I'm gonna go control C and rerun Python uplink. Actually, I'll clear it and rerun Python uplink. So this is uh, rerunning on, on my computer here. Uh, so the remote, there's a remote one as well as the one on the server here. So this is say hello local. So I'm just going to copy that function name, go back to my form. In the code, I'll say uh, anvil server call. Let's run the, the function say hello local. All right. And uh, actually, I'll make one change here. It'll be hello from... The local server. How about that? Save that, run it. So again, let's say uh, Peter, submit hello from the local server, Peter. Okay, so that ran uh, the function uh, on the server side within Anvil, the exact same function. We'll change the client side co code now to say uh, let's run the function say hello remote instead. And so now this function will run this uh, and we'll say Mary, submit that. Hello from the uplink Mary. And so that is actually calling uh, the uplink, which is running on my computer, Mary. All right. So um, obviously this is a very simple example and uh, you wouldn't, actually create an uplink just to have it uh, take in a name and output some uh, a text string back to uh, the Anvil client. You would, I mean, you'd just do that in the client really, but, uh, but you'd, you'd try to make use of the server side, Anvil's server side code, uh, this yellow space, which is a module, uh, as much as possible. And, uh, but this is just a really basic demo just to show you how to get uh, Anvil uplink up and running, uh, and it is very straightforward. But uh, sometimes the documentation uh, might be might not always be that uh, simple for someone to do. So I just wanted to record a video on it uh, so you could see how it's done. So why would you want to create an uplink in the first place? Uh, after all, Anvil's created this server side code that you can create, and and it does everything on the server end. Uh, so it it you know you get the benefits of security. Uh, people can't see what you're processing on the server side compared to the client side, but why would you want an uplink? And there's a couple of reasons uh, for creating a, an uplink, and I think the biggest one uh, that Anvil promotes is that natively Anvil might not have all the functionality that uh, that you need or want. Uh, you might have some proprietary code or access to a database uh, that uh, is custom for your your needs and your environment. And you can't do that with an Anvil natively. Uh, so that's when you can create your own uplink and run whatever code or whatever libraries you have that aren't accessible uh, through Anvil. Uh, another reason is there's a lot of features built into the server side uh, of Anvil itself. Um, but some of those libraries that you may want to access, some of the, even the popular ones, uh, they're only available through a paid plan. You can't actually... Uh, use those libraries. You can't import them or add them um, without having a paid plan. And so, um, you know, it's great to pay and, and support Anvil 
But for whatever reason, if you don't want to, you can sort of uh, work around it and uh, create an uplink and then import whatever library you want or whatever Python code you want and run it through your uplink. Um, the trade-off is, yeah, you have to have your own server that runs this uplink and is available for your app to access it at any time. Um, but generally, I mean, you can do it from directly from your computer uh, or any other web server, like I mentioned before. Now, this example that I showed you is super basic, like I mentioned, and it doesn't really require an uplink. But I just wanted to show you something. I wanted to show you how simple it is to create an uplink and access it through uh, the Anvil interface. In the next video, I'm actually going to show you something uh, a little more complex uh, that you can't run on Anvil uh, without a paid plan, um, but I'll show you how you can still run the code through an uplink uh, even with the free plan. And also, I, I'm creating these videos without really knowing um, whether there's uh, much demand or interest in Anvil. Uh, there's a lot of documentation and some discussions going on on the anvil.works website itself. But outside of that, when you look on YouTube, there's not really all that much information on Anvil. And uh, so I'm just sort of putting up these videos just to see whether there's any kind of interest in knowing more about Anvil or, or if people want to see some of these demos. So if you do, please uh, leave a comment below to give me your feedback. Um, like the video. Uh, and if you, if you love what I'm doing, even subscribe to me. Um, that'll indicate to me and, and encourage me to keep going and produce these videos. Uh, so that's all for now. I'll see you in the next video.